Today what I'm going to talk to you about is Dear Jane. The quilt that you see here is usually known by the name Dear Jane. It's sometimes called a Baby Jane. The original that was made by Jane Blakely Stickle was simply called her sampler quilt. Mine is a reproduction of Jane's quilt and so most of the time I just call it Dear Jane and most people who are familiar with it will call it Dear Jane. Most quilters know it as the most often started and least often finished. <laughs> this, I am proud to say, is finished. <laughs> Jane was born Jane A. Blakely on April 8, 1817. Her father and two of her sisters died in some kind of an epidemic, probably a flu epidemic of some kind. Jane was left with her mother, Sally, and they lived and worked together on 16 acres of ground that Sally inherited when her husband died. Included in the list of assets of possessions that she inherited were two quilts valued at $5. <laughs> Jane married subsequently a fellow named Walter Stickle in about 1850. They did not have any children of their own, but they did help raise some children, uh, probably nieces and nephews. By 1860, when Jane was 43 years old, she's listed in the census as living by herself, and her occupation is listed as farmer. Her husband, Walter, was living with a brother-in-law during this time, and maybe he was there to help with planting or harvesting or something like that on the farm. But the 1870 records show that they're back together again. And uh, 1877, they were in, in bankruptcy, and uh, by the time of her husband's death in 1883, they were living as boarders. So they went through some really hard times and ended up um, as boarders. What Jane did during all those years without Walter or the rest of her family is mostly unknown. We know that she finished her quilt, the quilt, in 1863. Um, all of us who quilt assume that she continued piecing and quilting because we can't imagine that she did this one and only quilt. Uh, I hope she didn't, but I don't know. After having done it, it may have been <laughs> her one and only quilt. Um, hopefully someday, maybe some more of her quilts will be found. This one was found in a trunk. Jane was still a boarder at the time of her death in 1896 at the age of 79. She's buried with her brother and his family in the Shaftesbury Cemetery just down the road from where she spent her entire life. In 1991, a lady by the name of Brenda Papadakis, who was an avid quilter, was reading a book called Plain and Fancy when she first saw a picture of the quilt, and she was totally captivated by it. Brenda was a math teacher. And she was drawn to this quilt because of all the triangles, all the geometrics, and the overall design in each of the blocks, as well as the overall quilt. This quilt, however, is more than just geometry, triangles, and little blocks. As you examine the quilt, you can realize how non-traditional, creative, and innovating it is. It was and is new and exciting, not only in originality of design, but also in its composition. As she looked at the photograph of this quilt, Brenda realized that the block designs were mostly original. These were new designs, not reproductions of the usual quilt blocks that were used in most of the quilts that were being made at this time. Brenda was challenged by her friend to draft the blocks so that the quilt could be duplicated. With this challenge, <laughs> Brenda drafted as many of the blocks as she could using the photograph from the book. About that time, this same friend, Kay, was in Houston at the quilt market, and lo and behold, there was the quilt on display. Kay photographed more blocks for Brenda, and so with a compass and ruler, Brenda started designing and drafting those blocks that she had not been able to from just the picture in the book. It's been interesting to, to read about Brenda. I, she became really emotionally involved with this quilt and with these blocks. 
I'd almost say she became obsessed by him, uh, maybe possessed even. <laughs> In her ma mind, Jane's quilt became the mother and all subsequents are baby Janes. She says that each baby Jane belongs to their maker, but there is only one mother. She wrote in her book, she writes to Jane as she is talking about these blocks. It's interesting because she really had a conversation going with this woman. In July of 1992, Brenda visited the museum in Bennington, Vermont, and that's where the quilt now resides. She spent three mornings tracing the quilt and three afternoons exploring the life of Jane Stickle. Virtually all that I know and that most of us know about Jane is what Brenda found out at that time. According to Jane's hand, this quilt was made during wartime, during the Civil War, and it has 5,602 pieces in it. I can't verify that. <laughs> And I can't imagine keeping track of that either. So I'll take her word for it. All I know is it has a boatload of pieces in it. That's kind of the Dear Jane story. Do you have any questions? I'm not a cool person, but if a woman from 1860 made this mm -hmm. during wartime when she didn't have very much money, how did she make and where did she get all the different kinds of fabric? I think it was whatever she found. I, it was the, the um, a shirt wore out and the tail of the shirt was okay or some place on it was okay or um, maybe there was a, um, you know, wherever there was a piece of fabric. That it doesn't take very much of the colored fabric to do one of these little blocks and I think she would probably be picking it up wherever. She was making these blocks up as she went along. And in the original, when you look at the original, uh, in the pictures of the original, um, sometimes even the little tiny pieces are pieced because she ran out of fabric or she, she needed a, just a little bit more. Um, sometimes the blocks would be a little too small and she would simply log cabin them. That just means add another piece around the edges. And you'd have an you know, like a quarter of an inch that was added to it to, to make it come out right. So um, we, I was showing a couple of people this. This is kind of funny. My niece is, uh, does journals, and so she made this journal for me so that I would have something to keep uh, my dear Jane journey in. And, uh, um, so I have all the blocks, uh, not all of them, but a bunch of the blocks that I really messed up. And this is the first triangle that I made. And this is the first triangle that we got the pattern for. Do you see any problem here? <laughs> yeah, right, it's not at all right. But not only did I make this, I made the whole thing all the way through to the end before I realized, oops. So you would think that by month two, I would have that straight in my head. Well, the answer is, no, I didn't. <laughs> Did it again. And it, uh, you had to resize on the pattern each uh, for the triangles from the blocks to the triangles each time. And obviously, I didn't do that. There are some other pieces here. You know, that was my attempt at reverse applique. I'm not good at that. That was just messed up, you know. We, we had some fun with this and we just laugh like crazy doing it. Um, some of the uh, blocks, some of these blocks would take as little as a couple hours and there were some that took a couple days. And the most pieces in any of this, I think one of them was just over 100 pieces in a four and a half inch block. So they're, <laughs> it's pretty intense as it were. Anything else? Yes? Are the colors in the quilt similar to the colors? Similar, yeah. These, of course, are all reproductions. Uh, but, yeah, it's similar. Uh, they tried to, to make them uh, close to it so that it would resemble the trip around the world and so forth. Anything else? Have you seen the original? 
I have not. I do want to go to Bennington. I would love to see it. I would love to see the, the real thing. It's only on display a couple, three months a year. And um, because it's, I'm, I'm sure it's pretty fragile. It has to be by now. Yes, this is, this is the dimension. This is the dimension. I think it's about 85 by 85. Um, her scallop was a little um, narrower. I think it was half inch. This is one inch. Um, it just didn't, you couldn't see that it was the blooming scallop, I thought, with the half inch. So I thought, if I'm making scallops, we're going to see those things. <laughs> Please come up and uh, look at it. I'll be glad to answer any of your questions. Uh, if you would sign, the, sign my book, if you have any comments, please make them and enjoy the show and come back again next year or sooner. <laughs>